up is in that division. You got Scott Quinn, Carl Frampton, Gary Marie. Oh, I'm gonna get the opportunity, boy. You working your ass off, don't you? Hey, that's what we do. That's what we yeah, do. Yeah, there's boxing nation. I see it, baby. Y'all the man. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, I love, love what you're doing for boxing. Thank you, man. Don't stop. Keep on going strong. Keep on going hard. A lot of big fights coming this year. A lot of big fights. Hi, you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? Well, as the fights in 2016 continue to heat up, it looks like HBO versus Showtime's rivalry continues to heat up as well. Now when it comes to the boxing fans, we just want to see the best and the most competitive fights put on. But when it comes to HBO versus Showtime, they're battling. And we're going to find out who's going to put on the best shows of the year or the best fight cards of the year. Now if you really break it down, this battle is really Showtime, Al Heyman and the PBC series versus HBO, Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Arum. Now today Showtime and Espinosa came out swinging when it comes to Showtime basically announcing seven live boxing telecasts over a 12 week span. A stacked lineup featuring nine world championship fights and 14 overall matches in boxing's deepest and most exciting divisions. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and quote exactly what Steven Espinoza, the executive vice president and general manager of Showtime Sports, had to say about this announcement. Quote, this is an incredibly exciting time in boxing, a time for emerging stars to make their mark and for established champions to break through to the next level. This schedule features high level matchups with champions taking on the highest rated contenders available and top ranked challenges facing one another. We are thrilled and grateful to the promoters and the fighters themselves who have worked with us these last few weeks to put together such an impressive lineup for Showtime Boxing. It has to be one of the best we've ever assembled. End quote. Now let me go ahead and name some of these fights in the lineup, some of the most relevant fights. Now some of these fights you guys already know about and some of them you probably don't know about. So let's go ahead and start with April 9th. So on April 9th you have Charles Martin going up against Anthony Joshua for the IBF heavyweight title. That's a good fight. On the undercard you have Lee Selby versus Eric Hunter. Now on April 16th is the return of Gary Russell Jr. He'll be defending this title for the first time against Patrick Hyland. That should be a pretty good fight. The co-main event is another title shot. It's the IBF Super Featherweight title. It's uh, Jose Pedraza versus Steven Smith. Now this fight card right here, which has been rescheduled to June 25th, in my opinion, is the best fight card on this entire list. And that is Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter on CBS free TV presented by PBC now this fight right here is so significant because it's just so much on the line there's no doubt about it the winner of this fight is the best welterweight in the world right now there is no doubt about it this is a big fight and this is a step up for Keith Thurman it's more of a step up for Keith Thurman than it is for Sean Porter but it's also you know a step up for Porter as well but Porter he's been in the ring with the likes of Kell Brook already and a lot of people believe that Kell Brook is actually the best welterweight out of the bunch right now. So clearly with Keith Thurman being in the ring with Kell Brook, that proves that he's a little bit more battle tested than Keith Thurman. So we'll see how it goes down on June 25th. Once again, that's going to be on CBS. And then you have the undercard on this fight as well. This is a pretty good undercard fight. And that is um, Jesus Cuellar versus Abner Mares. Now that's another title shot. That's a good matchup right there. Now don't quote me, but I believe Jesus Cuellar is undefeated. He's been looking really good. He's a power puncher. He knows how to box. And he's going up against Abner Mares. As you guys know, Abner Mares, he just came off of a war with Leo Santa Cruz. Very competitive fight. And now he's going to fight against Jesus Cuellar. This is a step up for Jesus Cuellar in a certain sense. Now you guys have to forgive me for jumping out of order. As I jumped all the way to June, let's uh, rewind and go back to April. So on April 30th, you have Badu Jack 
versus Lucian Boutte. They're fighting for the WBC title. That's a good fight. That's a very good fight. I'm happy for Badu Jack because he was. it seemed like he had to feel a little down finding out that Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. pulled out of their fight because that was going to be a big fight for Badu Jack. You know, it was a type of fight that was going to produce a lot of exposure. But Lucian Boutte is not a bad backup plan. And that's not a guaranteed win for Badu Jack because Lucian Boutte is still a good fighter. So that's a competitive fight. I look forward to seeing that one. And you also have on the undercard, James DeGale. He'll be returning and he'll be fighting against Rogelio Medina for the IBF Super Middleweight title. So that's another decent card that'll be on April 30th. Then you move down to another real big one. This one right here doesn't have a date, but it's pretty much on the list already. So that means it's damn near a done deal. And that is the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder versus Alexander Povetkin. The guy that Decaf said that Wilder was going to duck and he was so afraid of and he was just shaking, so on and so forth. You know, there's talks that the fight may actually be in Russia. I don't know where the fight is going to be because all that stuff is subject to change. But according to Showtime, it's going down. See, because I don't believe that Showtime would actually put this fight on their list of fights to come up if the fight wasn't extremely close to being announced. So that's a big one to watch for. This is another big step up for Deontay Wilder. A lot of people believe that Pavekin has the style to actually knock out Wilder. So, you know, this is going to test Deontay Wilder's inside game mainly because we already know Pavekin is like a little short tank. Not only is he a little short tank, but he also knows how to box. So we're going to see. We're going to see where Deontay Wilder is. If Deontay Wilder can go in there and blow out Pavekin and do it in a more impressive fashion than Vladimir Klitschko did, that would be a hell of a statement. Now, there's no doubt about it, Deontay Wilder, he definitely has flaws, he has holes in his game, but he seems like a fighter that basically is always learning on the job. He seems to get a little bit better and better. I still would like to see Deontay Wilder control these fighters with his jab. The way fighters like Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly, and Lennox Lewis were able to do. I don't like when I see Deontay Wilder backing up all the way to the ropes when a guy charges after him. If Deontay Wilder starts to control fighters with his jab and starts to incorporate check hooks more often to set up combinations, I think he could damn near be unbeatable. But he has to correct those flaws. Let's go ahead and move on to June 11th. Now this news right here is pretty interesting because on June 11th, Ruzan Provotnikov will be returning and he won't be fighting against Terrence Crawford. Instead, he's going to be fighting against John Molina. Now, this is interesting. For those of you guys who don't know, Ruzan Provotnikov, he turned down a fight with Terrence Crawford. And that was the reason why Terrence Crawford was fighting against Hank Lundy. Well, it wasn't just Provotnikov. It was, it was other fighters as well. It was Mauricio Herrera. It was Provotnikov. And it was other fighters. But Provotnikov, he turned down the fight. And Bob Arum had just said a couple days ago that he's trying to make Crawford versus Provodnikov next. So a couple days ago, it was reported that Ruzan Provodnikov, he said in response to Crawford basically offering him a fight, that he only has one request when it comes to that fight. And that is the fight not be held in Crawford's hometown of Nebraska. Now, I forget what state it was that Bob Arum just recently said, but Bob Arum had already just recently said that Crawford's next fight, it won't be in Nebraska. So, Ruza Provotnikov, even after getting what he asked for, he still turned down the fight with Terrence Crawford to take on a much, much easier opponent in John Molina. That is pretty damn interesting, to say the least. So this is a decent fight. I'm not going to sit over here and tell you that this is one of the best fights to look out for. We already know what type of fight that we're getting. But it's a decent fight. And we'll just leave it at that. And I'll say this as well. You guys hear me say it all the time. I'm going to say it again. Only in the sport of boxing does the matador often chase the bull. There was no reason for Ruslan Provodnikov 
to turn down a fight with Terrence Crawford to fight against John Molina. Anyway, so those are pretty much all the fights. I didn't name them all, but those were um, some of the most significant fights. Oh, actually, I forgot about one. And this is news just in. Apparently, Carl Frampton, who was ordered to either fight Guillermo Rigondeaux next or give up his belts, he decided to give up his belts. And now he's moving up in weight to fight against the much easier Leo Santa Cruz. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a great matchup. But the Guillermo Rigondeaux factor is something that we have to address, obviously, right? So even though neither one of these fighters were willing to fight against pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world, this is still a very good matchup. It is a battle of undefeateds. Leo Santa Cruz versus Carl Frampton is a great matchup. And I will tell you this. Now, even though they didn't fight against Guillermo Rigondeaux, if the winner of this fight were to at least fight someone like a Gary Russell Jr., that would be the closest thing to fighting against Guillermo Rigo. So we'll see what happens, but um, this is the lineup pretty much. So let's see what kind of fights HBO puts on. Hopefully this is motivation for them to step their game up. All we know for sure is we have a pay-per-view fight, which is Pacquiao versus Bradley 3. They have Canelo and Khan, and you have, um, what's the other fight? Oh, you have um, a real good one, which is Ward versus Barrera. That's another good fight, but they need to give us more than that. So that's pretty much all I got for now. I'll be doing some separate videos on some of these fights, and I'll catch up with you. I'm on to the next one.